started here. <laughs> Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, we so within the with, at the Woods Center, we do a lot of programming that's geared towards obviously our our uh, entrepreneurial community. And so this this um, kind of virtual roundtable stemmed out of an idea that our hub manager um, Tyler Zimlack, as well as other members on our team, we have our on the line. We have our program. Um, manager Aaron Doherty, we have uh, our coordinators Aaron, um, Marin Scannell and, uh, and April Albano. And um, so kind of coming together to try to figure out, you know, how can we continue to convene conversation, to create community at a time when people were feeling incredibly, um, you know, just disconnected and, and maybe even to a certain extent displaced. And so it was really important for um, for many to um, you know to try to figure out ways in which that they could still uh, be part of this conversation. And so when we pooled our um, our folks and said, okay, what are some things that you'd like to hear about? Um, you know, kind of marketing it came up right really really clearly in terms of how do we continue to position ourselves to. Uh, market, you know, ethically, effectively, authentically within this very dynamic and very changing environment. And um, so we we heard that, and so that was kind of the starting point for tonight's topic. And um, typically, we try to keep it. I mean, obviously, it's in the name, a roundtable. It suggests very, you know, small, intimate conversation gathering, but. Uh, um, we had a, we had a lot more people interested in being a part of uh, being a part of this. So so if you were here last week and you're here again this week, probably the look and feel of it, it you know is a little bit different than what you saw last time. Um, but that's simply because essentially we have pulled up more chairs around around this table, and so we really wanted to give everybody a chance to at least hear what we what we were going to chat about. And so in advance of tonight, that's why we asked you to, you know, come up with some questions that you might want to hear that we could gear the conversation towards as well as continuing to, um, you know, I'm pointing to the right side of my screen here, continuing to populate the chat feature. So, you know, our team is really, really busy, um, you know, keeping track of what's being asked. And, um, you know, they're going to be flagging for me some questions if it's new and different in terms of what's come up. So just to, I want to just to kind of preface with you say, with that, just because I, I recognize that, um, you know, the, the message that we're trying to get around, like to talk about tonight is really important, regardless of what sector or, or industry or size of your business, um, communicating who we are and what we do is is critical right now, um, you know, both in, both in terms of how we are, um, you know, serving and selling to our to our community. And so, um, so with that, I'm not going to go into too much more detail right now because I really did want to give a chance for our guests here tonight to share a little bit about uh, themselves, and and then we're going to mm -hmm. kind of dive into uh, the questions that we have um, that we have lined up for them. So um, if I'm just kind of looking at my screen here, I'm going to actually go to Shaney first because uh, you're, you're right there at the top. So Shaney, do you want to just take a minute, if you don't mind, and just give us a little a bit about um, maybe like a two to three minute overview in terms of um, your marketing experience um, and kind of what you're up to now. Sure. Thank you, Melanie. It's a great opening. And hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Shani Kuo, as it says on the on the Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> um, I worked uh, for international consumer goods company for the past decades, and then I was lucky enough to manage some of the well-known brands such as Budweiser, Corona. Um, that's a sensitive word, but Corona beer yeah. and Johnny Walker, <laughs> Bailey's, Barbie, and other um, healthy food and beverage brands. And that um, experience opens up a window for me to look at different business models in different uh, markets, such as North America, Asia, Europe, and um, some of it is in uh, Australia and Southeast Asia. And before my corporate life, uh, I was with a uh, PR agency it's called Ogilvy & Mather, working side by side with Nokia. 
a decade ago. So yeah. it was still quite big. Uh, what's Nokia? <laughs> not, not as big as blue, uh, Blueberries, of course. Uh, so Nokia and Nestle back then. And I'm just uh, feeling very honored to be here. And hopefully I can provide some helpful uh, perspective information. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Shani. Um, okay, so next on my screen, I have Kurt. Over to you. Thanks, uh, Melly. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kurt Hammond, and I really appreciate the chance to be part of a conversation tonight. I am the Chief Listening Officer at Pearl Street Communications. We are based in Ontario's most beautiful village of Alora. Come on up when you can, <laughs> when you're you traveling once again. Um, we are a team passionate about good communications and passionate about change making, marketing, training, uh, coaching, and facilitation. And we, most of our work is focused on helping organizations figure out what their story is, so they package it up and then send it back out into the world. And we are really, really lucky to do a fair bit of work in Guelph and we appreciate the chance to, um, uh, to do that work locally and we do uh, some work provincially as well. I just wanted to quickly share uh, some of the things I'm hearing, just mm. to set a little bit of context, just really quickly. You know, both as a community leader, as a business owner myself, and as a, someone who's interested in good communications and marketing. And there's three things I just really wanted to quickly share and what we can circle back to. First and foremost, the questions we're getting and the work we're doing is around the importance of acknowledgement. And that acknowledgement is mission critical. And I, I think Doug's gonna, Doug and I will be sympathetic on a lot, a lot of this as well. Um, internally and externally, it's really important that we're acknowledging what we're all going through, what our teams are going through, what our customers are going through. The second thing I'm hearing is um, the struggle, the honest to goodness conversation of what am I, you know, what, what am I supposed to do here? How am I supposed to make a living, build top line and still be honoring the situation it is? So I want to, I want to acknowledge the struggle that, as marketers that we're all facing. I think it's really genuine and real. And the last, uh, and then, um, last bullet that I'm hearing and, and thinking about is how am I adding value and how am I helping? And how am I making sure that that is the focus of my communications engagement marketing right now? And then maybe I come back to the sales a little later. But I think right now it's all about how am I adding value into conversations mm -hmm. as opposed to taking? And that's setting me up for maybe those um, the more direct sales we might be doing in the future. So importance of acknowledgement, struggling the struggle itself, and then figuring out how we add value in, uh, in these times. Awesome. So look, thanks look so much for that. Lots, thanks. lots that we're going to be coming back to for sure. Yeah, thanks. Doug, over to you. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you or maybe for you to see us tonight. Sorry about that. Great to be involved and excited um, to be part of a conversation, really. Uh, I think it's a, a caution that there are no experts in this. We're all navigating something new and all the language right we're seeing on every commercial. So uh, hopefully the chat will be where we all gain and learn and contribute uh, along the way. Um, and just before I go into kind of who I am, picking up on my friend Kurt here around um, the theme of vulnerability. I found that very interesting in working with my clients who some of their brands don't necessarily lean that way naturally. And so we've had to work over the last couple of weeks to bring an allowance to the vulnerability that they're they're experiencing. There's not one of us in this who's not vulnerable and feeling that way to some extent through the work that we're doing, the people we're working with, the people we love. And I'm finding that the traction for the clients that I'm working with is coming with those who are kind of just letting that guard down and being pretty, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty honest and using tools like this with customers to do it. So mm -hmm. interesting set up for, for the conversation. So anyway, my name is Doug McMillan and I lead a great team at the letter M in Guelph, a team of about eight. And we focus on building brands and communication strategies that build strong, profitable companies, but also strong communities. And the work that we do in the private sector, and I'd say our client base is pretty much split half and half between sort of the public sector uh, you know, municipal library, nonprofit, and then the private sector client of all shapes and sizes. And what they all share is a goal to strengthen the community uh, as they define it, where they where, where they serve and where they work. Uh, and we have a lot of opportunity to help build brands with organizations um, that see that as a pillar and a core tenet 
of, of being in business, whatever that, uh, that business may be. So proud to have a team of about eight around us. And then we have a bit of a, an agility model as today's agency where there's another ring of about 50 phenomenally brilliant people that we can call on um, to serve the vastness of what marketing is today. So sometimes I say I'm more of a broker to the talent, mm. uh, bringing a lot of that information, but happy to share what I've, I've learned along the way over about 30 years of stumbling through this business. You're old. I am. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> Next year is on Kurt, apparently. <laughs> oh, no, it's great to have some, um, some wise words. How's that? How's that? Um, <laughs> well, <please. laughs> wise is a new word for old. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I was just kind of quickly glancing over what's been popping up on our on our chat box, uh, you know, kind of while listening and and um, you know what I what I really appreciate is that you know the variety of folks who we have here tonight in terms of their backgrounds and and sectors that they're coming from and their interests. Um, but, you know, I think that just goes to show the transference of, of marketing, communication, relationships, value add, like, I don't know how we want to position this, but, you know, it matters to everyone right now. And um, it's, it's critical, um, you know, how we are positioning ourselves um, amongst, amongst others, be it our competitors or simply just amongst other people in, within, within the sector of the field. What, what I find interesting, right, is so before, before COVID, I'm going to probably say BC and, and AC for the rest of tonight, but, you know, before COVID, people were using a, a number of different tools, right? They had all sorts of different types of, of strategies that they were using or approaches to uh, engaging with their audiences. So some, some were perhaps a little bit more traditional in that they preferred more face-to-face -face engagement and connecting in that way. Others were very perhaps um, you know, active social media online. Uh, and then you, know, you have everybody in between that are using uh, sort of an assortment of, of all of that along that continuum, I guess, if you will, the communication continuum. And then almost like overnight, everybody was thrusted now to essentially using uh, the same format of communication, the same platform, I should say, not format, but platform. And so now we have people who are trying to, um, you know, um, familiarize themselves with, with, with the technology, to try to figure out how to engage and connect it, you know, what, with what now, what feels like maybe perhaps a little bit of, you know, impersonal, you know, it's tactics and tools. So what would you say would be some, you know, now that everyone's been kind of like thrust into this new, new lens, um, what would be something that you could, you know, speak to maybe a little bit from, from your experience of what you've been seeing so far from some of your clients, maybe some of them have reached out to you and looking for insight and advice, like what would be some themes kind of tech related that you're seeing come up that people are looking to try to embrace now? Take it well, away, whoever wants to go. <laughs> That wasn't on the list, Melanie. I know, it wasn't. Yeah. I know. See, this is Great welcome start. to the Melanody Show. <laughs> well, and I love it because um, I can speak to it very kind of genuinely from my own experience in the last month. Is and and I, I get energy from people, as a lot of us do, probably who are participating in this today. And you know, sort of, I was taught to own a room and all that kind of stuff, and suddenly that got all taken away. And what I found was it, it was about just being true about it and comfortable and if you're stumbling around and where the heck is the audio don't try and fake it out right and just kind of yes. roll with it and and understand that with others and have a bit of fun so it, it's been interesting along the way of kind of how where where does humor fit in you know in all that we're doing from a communication and, and a relationship point of view and that that's where we're going to be able to have a bit of playfulness is just uh, kind of accepting that we're all stumbling through uh, and that it's okay to do that uh, and the minute you do that it breaks something down and you stay true so you become yourself uh, a little bit more and you're not you're not working so hard to to work through the screen work through the microphone uh, it just becomes a, a bit of a conversation of course every day and and we do it we feel a little more comfortable and so that's the other piece to me is don't shy away from this type of engagement this type of um, opportunity to connect and, and learn from it. So let it happen. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Anything uh, else you wanted to add, Jenny? Yeah, and for me, I think after uh, this outbreak of pandemic, finally people are looking at some important but basic things like health, safety, and then I think uh, I've been working for a corporation for years, and then now I can say a lot of corporations, they finally started to look their communication in a more human-centric way. Right. Before pandemic, it was more commercial. Like they do things for their own product, but now they really do things that benefit the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just feel like this will be a transformation, not only on the... Uh, obvious media touch point or the technology side but honestly uh, I think this pandemic give us a time to reflect and then to think what's more important in our lives and then how we can shine upon uh, others with our human-centric message or our basic care or even though we're in uh, isolation and we're stuck at home and how we can still keep this community together through all kinds of technology I think that's I wouldn't say the beauty of it, I would, but I would refer it as the silver lining. And then mm -hmm. I see that a lot and very often here at, in Guelph. And then luckily in Guelph, we're, we're kind of in the lucky uh, region that we can have still a lot of good things happening here. Yeah. But then, yeah, I just feel like this is now the time to show more authenticity and um, empathy and compassion. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's all great. <clears throat> Just building on what Doug and Shani have said, you know, putting an internal lens and thinking internally about how we're communicating with our teams. Um, and this is how we're doing it now. And we're leading through, we're leading through Zoom and Slack. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important. Back to that acknowledgement piece. That was one of my big takeaways in terms of mm -hmm. acknowledging where our teams are at, taking the time to check in on that. And then also, and this is a bit of a, a logistical piece, but for me, and it's something we've done at Pearl Street, is we're actually saying the purpose of this time is now too. And I learned this from a sessions, some sessions I've been sitting in, that we're using the technology because otherwise it becomes a bit of a soup in terms of what a meeting could be for. So I've got specifically an internal lens on the communications now, which is quite frankly more important now than ever before. Mm -hmm. But clearly articulating this meeting, this 15 minutes is just to catch up. How's your day? How's everybody at yeah. home? What's going on? Yeah. And then the next 15 minutes, maybe we actually leave Zoom and come back in. Now we're talking strategy, or now we're talking tactics. So giving ourselves permission to just enjoy the full 15 minutes of shooting the breeze, and then saying, all right, you know what? We're gonna click into our next meeting, and that's where we're gonna talk about how we're gonna, you know, our to-do mm -hmm. list today. I think mm -hmm. the technology is a tool to help us stay organized, stay in touch, and we wanna own it as opposed to it owning us. And that's been a, something we've been practicing, as I say, at Pearl Street. And it's really helped that we literally say, okay, uh, you know, client meeting starts now. And so here we go. So yeah, uh, maybe something that people can keep in mind. Right. No, I appreciate that. And I guess the reason why I, I stumped you all and started with that question was just to almost kind of create a little bit of a level playing field to say that, you know, regardless of what your business is, we're all now experiencing the same level of newness, right? As we all together venture forward into this, this space. Um, and, uh, you know, regardless of, of, you know, your strategies before it needs to change now, right? You're, we're being forced to, to reevaluate and perhaps restructure and, and go forward in, in that regard. So, so I appreciate that. Um, we're going to kind of dive into the questions now that were, um, submitted ahead of time by those people who were, who had, who had registered. And what we've done is we've grouped them into themes because it was really interesting to see how we had um, a lot of overlap and similarities. And then we also kind of staggered them in terms of uh, perhaps the stage that the business is in, or uh, maybe there was a particular sector. And, and, and I see that being reinforced a lot about what we're seeing here tonight come up in some of the questions. Um, and so maybe if we wanted just to kind of dive in, which I think is a little bit like a nice segue based on what we were just talking about in terms of connecting, right? Connecting with our people and, and using the technology to, to help us in and along that, in and along that regard. And so looking at kind of this idea around managing relationships and, and um, you know, how are we going to now creatively in, engage with our customers? and maintain that authentic 
um, you know, whether it's a brand identity or, you know, our, our, ourselves in terms of representing that brand, how are we going to kind of um, continue to, to do business within this, within this, you know, platform within, the, within this setting? So kind of in and around managing relationships, what, what can you kind of provide or offer as insight in that regard? Maybe I'll, I'll jump in just at 35,000 yeah. feet. Because the first question we have to ask ourselves is, why am I marketing right now? And I think we, we need to be honest with us with ourselves around that. And we just can't assume it's the same reason that we were doing it before. So I think it's an honest conversation we need to have around why am I reaching out? Is it to, is it to sell? That's, that's okay. Is it to build awareness? Is it to um, uh, you know, support the community in a certain specific way? I think the why really needs to be first and foremost before you start putting a bunch of time or effort into rolling any programming out. And there's no right or wrongs there, but they have different, they'll have different strategies attached to them, different tactics, and they will look and feel different to your community and with different, you'll be measuring them differently as well. So I, I encourage everyone to give themselves permission to step back for a second and say, why am I doing this and what do I want out of it? And with that, then I think you can think about next steps and, and tactics. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Anybody want to add, in, add on to that? Sure. It, it's, I've had a couple of client conversations now where they're used to being on the phone to sell. And I think to Kurt's point, understanding their sort of their what, what success should look like at the end of that engagement one way or another. What they're doing is they're shifting toward an objective of connecting and, and simply engaging with customers and seeing where that goes. And then in some cases, it's leading to a sale. So um, one example, we have a fairly large um, HVAC client. So an essential service, but people aren't necessarily seeing it that way. Uh, but they're open for business and they're trying to keep people employed. And they have uh, an extremely well-trained customer care team. And if there's any example of readiness and just keeping trained and keeping up, they would be it. Because they were able to transition very quickly into simply reaching out to their customers who they know are vulnerable. They know the older, the older people, they know people living alone. Um, they're aware of some clients because of what they do who have respiratory challenges. So they kind of started segmenting and simply reaching out. And there was no selling. There was nothing even more than, I'm not actually here to ask you if you need a furnace checkup. I'm here to see if you need a prescription fill or I'm calling just to make sure you're okay. Some of them, they're not getting off the phone for an hour and a half yeah. because it's a, it's a senior. And their, their, their essential service uh, truly is just connecting. Mm -hmm. There have been other calls, though, where it has led to the fact that their indoor air quality isn't as effective as it should be right now. Well, let's get someone out there and clean your ducts and yeah. you know, all the HEPA filter and you know whatnot. So it is leading to sales, but it's being done truly because they don't need it to, they don't want it to, um, they want to connect. Uh, and that's letting them really engage at a different level. Um, and again, they're looking long game. And we all know that at the end of it, the connections and the conversations they've had will serve them. And to, to Shani's point from a human level, right? right We're with each other as human beings. Um, the other example I have with another client who's more of a professional service company is they're simply using the kind of the opportunity that we're all locked down to uh, do surveying and questioning. And a lot of the time it's hard to actually lock people down for a good conversation around how are we doing and what can we do better and what could you use that we're not doing right now and those kinds of things. And so they're more seeding the future by becoming better informed through this process. But at the same time, they're able to say, you know, how's the family and are you, are you at each other in the same room or what kind of thing? So a couple of nice examples that I've seen from, from clients that I've been fortunate to work with through this. Awesome. I'm just taking some notes here. Um, Shani, earlier, and I think you were talking about just that, the change, the shift in, in how corporations are looking externally and now we're looking internally. What, what is it that you're seeing now, um, how that shift has affected some of their, their outward communication? Um, I, before I answer that, I would like to share my desk and to share the slides if everyone can see it. Yeah. So don't be scared by this 
similarly framework is just a simple <laughs> sum up of my logic. I'm a graphic girl. So yeah, I, I basically talk my logic through my graphics. So I think a lot of people and, and uh, marketers or business owners, they're wondering about how they can deliver message without feeling taken advantage of this COVID and people's fear or anxiety. And um, uh, there, this is a framework for any business owner to easily get a hold of their thoughts. As first of all, we need, now is the time, any marketer or business owner to sh just shut up and open your ear to listen to the customer mm -hmm. needs because we're in a phase of transformation. It's a lot of uncertainty and, and there is no 100% perfect future for you to predict. But then what you can do is to be attentive to the signal. Either it's faint or is it strong, you need to go out and, uh, no, sorry, not go out. You need to observe what's <laughs> happening still here. Stay home, everybody. In, in our daily, daily life, day-to-day uh, -day life, and then you need to stick to your brand or your company truth. Mm -hmm. What's in it in your product or your company that you always want to promote and sell that echoes to the real need of your consumer at the moment or your client at the moment. And then at this moment, particularly, you need to think about social responsibility. Because each of us, the, the, the entrepreneurs or the corporation, we have this social responsibility that we can pay an effort to. For example, there are some um, entrepreneurs called uh, Summer Salt, is a swimwear uh, uh, startup. They basically transform their uh, customer service into a mental health hotline because they feel the need of people. They, they, some people, they are eager to talk. They're social isolating in their own home, and then they just want to have this social connection with people. So turns out, it's a funny uh, transformation, but turns out they're helping people. Mm -hmm. And then not to promoting any brands, but I do think some of the brands uh, are doing a good job. For example, Coca-Cola, uh, their, their uh, company purpose and value is always to make happiness to people's life to make a change and then during this pandemic they turned their twitter official site into an informative uh, expert health expertise site so you can if you now go check twitter uh, for coca-cola you can see they have red cross and they have a lot of other expertise sharing their tweets and sharing their health and um, information on it for uh, the consumers to have a look. And then it's it's brilliant. It's just like, it's a digital marketing, but then you're actually doing the social responsibility. And I think this is a simple example for a lot of people who's been wondering how they can communicate their brand and their business in this challenging time that mm. the, the framework is here to help you to have a look in and to think about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, thanks for that. That's, that's really um, interesting. Like you're saying, we're seeing so many shifts that are happening and it, it, it has taken this type of a, um, this, this global movement, right. To, to bring us all this new level of heightened awareness about what is, what is happening and, and, and what is it that our, our true needs are. Right. And I think you're right. I think customers are leaning into that. You know, they're craving, mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of that. They're craving yeah. that. And I don't know if it's connection that they're looking for, if it's, um, you know, to feel seen, to feel heard. Um, but that really is, is what's driving a lot of these, uh, a lot of these changes that, that we're seeing, you know, aside from the fact that it is the right thing to do right now, like, Hey, let's just put that on the table. <laughs> um, but it's so good to see that, that many are, are recognizing that, right? That that is so important that we're stewarding that. We're stewarding that. Um, one of the other things that I think, you know, we talked about in terms of the why, right? Okay, why is it that we're reaching out? And then if we move ahead in terms of the how, so the messaging that we are putting out into the world, and we did see just now, Shady shared a couple of exa examples of what that looks like, but, um, you know, how is it like are we are we going to be using things like email marketing for instance are we going to be is there other types of strategies that we're seeing 
um, again, coming back to this idea that many people are now all doing similar, you know, we're making similar efforts. And so how do we ensure that the messaging that we're putting out there is we differentiate ourselves, we are standing apart amongst the noise, we are, you know, ensuring that our brand still speaks for itself, our values are still very clear in terms of, you know, how people are, are seeing uh, their affiliate, you know, companies or brands that they're familiar with. Are those values still there? And I'll just share a little example that I learned today while I was listening in on another um, webinar. And it was really just, um, there are some companies that are, that are recognizing the, the, the tone of right now, right? And so Doug, you touched on this a little bit earlier in terms of um, you know, making sure that your efforts, you know, it's not falling on deaf ears. You know, this isn't, this is not maybe a time to be out there, you know, selling and making light of, of what's happening. And so the example today is, and I, I can't remember the, the name of the company, but essentially their, their marketing uh, that they had put out, it was a, it was a jean company, a clothing company, and their, their, uh, their approach, their line that they were using was essentially to, uh, to help you through your COVID blues. So blue jeans, their COVID blues. So just really, really uh, did not, did not land well at all. Right. And so really insensitive didn't, you know, somebody didn't read the room when, when that was, when that was put forward. So, so knowing that that's what we're trying to avoid, <laughs> How is it that we can use these messaging strategies to really kind of get out there and to connect with our people? Well, if you can get, if you, if you get that figured out, let us know. Cause I mean, that, I that, that really is the big question, right? Yeah. Um, and not to, not to downplay it, not to downplay it at all, but that is the, that's a bit of the, the secret sauce that everyone's looking for. I think, mm -hmm. I think any of the work we're doing right now and to build on what Cheney and Doug were saying, it has to come from a place of, our genuine brand like this is this is this is who we are this is what we this is what we know what we believe the value we bring um and i uh, i think where i see marketing going off i'm i'm actually clearing out my inbox like i can't believe how many newsletters i'm unsubscribing to right now because there are so many brands just aren't reading the room on that mm -hmm. and so uh, i think one of the questions we had is email marketing dad no I, I don't think it is in fact i think it's a really powerful tool right now i think we need you know we need to be smart about it there needs to be some intentionality around it back to that why mm -hmm. so back to the practical tools piece mm -hmm. i think the email you know your email list is a really powerful tool and if you can use that to start telling your story of your team and your customers and how, how this is impacting um, whatever it is, product or service you're delivering. I think that's where we can really start connecting with people. And I do think that um, purposeful and genuine email updates, <clears throat> talk, you know, adding value into my world and maybe bringing me into your story a little bit, I think those are gonna be welcomed by people. As, again, assuming they're coming from a place of genuineness. Yeah, and, and if just picking right up on that, um, simplicity. Yes, 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 yes. There's, there, this is not the time for bells and whistles. And no. maybe finally we're there, right? Where the, the easier and the simpler, the better. So um, w simple letters in an email that don't talk about these uncertain times and these uncharted this because we're all seeing the same language. Mm -hmm. And that's where the vulnerability. So I have mm -hmm. another client who every week he issues a letter. This is the owner of a company. I think of um, Gail Weston Jr., Right. Yes. Very yes. early on, Excellent. Yes. the leader of this business was out there and only he would represent the brand. And it yep. was very simple. It was easy cut videos uh, and he was being genuine and even a little bit vulnerable. Right. So I think when it comes from the top, um, there's a sense that it's that there's there's an authenticity to it. Yeah. And can I just can I just touch on the Galen piece there right now? I I said very early on when I started to get his his messages, I just I just really appreciated like we were saying about vulnerable but but also not just about how he was, you know, putting himself and representing his brand, but he was really standing he was really standing in front of his people, right? And so he was talking about all of us, and I get goosebumps, right? Because I just thought right on, he was out there saying, okay, you come into our stores, our people are doing their best to serve you and you need to treat them with respect. Like what leader stands up and says to their customers, 
about you need to treat, you know, these are people in your community who are doing their best. They're putting themselves at risk for you. You need to treat them with respect. And I just thought, you know, what a, what a great message for, to stand up really. And just, and everybody kind of, I think I was just so proud of him, you know, I, I am not connected with the organization at all, but I just thought that's exactly the kind of leadership that we need. And if, if after, you know, there is, there is a way to recognize leaders that have really stepped up, stepped up during this time. I really do hope that he is someone who is recognized for his efforts because he has done, I think, a phenomenal job and 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 speaks a lot to um, uh, speaks a lot to this this notion of being authentic and vulnerable that I think is so important right now and so needed. Well, and if I can take that local, I'm sorry, Shani, I'll jump yeah, in for one more second. Oh no, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and I have so much respect for this company. I don't mind saying them props, but the neighborhood group. The oh, I was going to go there too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Our region, Yep. Messaging from the leader, very genuine. You mm -hmm. can feel the break in his voice when you read his notes. Yep. It's yep. all about his people. Yep. And yet he's being a very wise brand strategist and marketer. And, and it's only because it's coming from such a true place that he's being effective at it. Uh, you know, he's selling. He's selling gift cards. He's giving it where it should go right now to his mm -hmm. employees and their mm -hmm. care. And, of course, he'll roar right back to life when those restaurants reopen yeah. because of all those right. gifts. So yeah. there is a way to be strategic, strategic smart, yeah. and truly yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Shane, we kind of interrupted you there. What would you, I'd love yeah. to hear your thoughts on this. I was about to say, uh, actually I was just thinking about email marketing the other day because yeah. things to be like, this is the time for it to come back. And then it's also the time how it reminds people words are a very effective way mm -hmm. for communication. And then if you see all the media touch point now, email probably is the one that will force you to read the most. Because yeah. you don't, because you know, Facebook and Twitter, they all have their limits for for showing the words but email it gives you just like a full page of words mm -hmm. uh, so i wouldn't say that email is dead i would say it's still very alive particularly for uh some industry for example the more um professional industry for example research industry they use email a lot to mm -hmm. introduce their business mm -hmm. but then while using your email you need to be particularly careful about engagement because email tend to be seen as a uh, informative tool instead of an engaging tool mm -hmm. so for the business owner who would like to use email for to create engagement uh, I'm sorry you probably feel very frustrated for it, by mm -hmm. it because email is for giving information instead of creating right. like two-way communication mm -hmm. but then there are several ways you can do it you insert content or um, you use some interesting, creative, or to Doc's point, you be more human-centric and to authentic and sincere and genuine with your words that you draw people's attention. Um, so uh, I, I, I can see in short, uh, email is still very alive. It's still uh, a powerful tool you can use, but then you need to set a uh, return and a target before you use this tool to approach your consumer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one question, just because we're on the subject, I just noticed there was a question that just popped up. So what would you say, you know, in, our, in an effort to be vulnerable, authentic, simple, um, you know, recognizing that it's, it's oftentimes, you know, outward, um, you know, messaging that's going out, we're not seeing a lot of stuff come in, but what would you say would be some things to, um, uh, Doug, you mentioned this earlier, you, like, you know, let's avoid like the cliche, like unprecedented times and unfamiliar territory and all that kind of stuff. So like, is there any, any kind of like suggestions in and around, you know, how do you, how do you even start? Like, what, what do you, what do you open with? Again, you open with something genuine and it's more about uh, how, how are you and I hope you're well. One interesting tool that's been working in email that I've seen is just dropping quick video, simple. Yeah. Uh, this is a time when we don't <coughs> polish. It's awesome. Mm. The a and commercial series right now. So good. He's shooting. Yes selfie videos from his living room and they're yeah. so much more impactful than the glitz and glamour car commercials that are yeah. on right now yeah mm -hmm. so 
one of the, something we're just exploring right now with with one client is giving people something to do so we went past the sort of the the platitudes and the just trying to connect and now we're at a point where um, this is a client that does an annual um, we call it a comfort drive it's coats and blankets and whatnot as we go you know into the the seasons well this isn't the season to be collecting them but they're they're kicking it off anyway and they're talking about how you might be spring cleaning and you know using your time to clear out a closet we'll come get those bags from you leave them on your porch contact list yada yada but we'll make sure they get where they need to be at a time when they're needed and so it's giving people something to do when otherwise they don't and that's been an interesting uh, well, we have, we're still kind of playing it out to, to drop it in the next week or so, but it's, we think it's going to be a, an effective right. strategy at just connecting with people uh, beyond these platitudes that we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. That's helpful. Thanks so much. So um, more, uh, sorry, Melanie, just yeah, really quick. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, sure. no, another tax. So kind of similar to what Doug's done, we've got some clients now that are profiling. How do you start? You know what? We want to introduce you to our team and show you where they're at today. Mm -hmm. We've actually written letters, you know, on behalf of clients um, and said, you know, I'm literally sitting at my, at my kitchen table because they are literally sitting at their kitchen table. So again, to uh, Shani's point, we're, we're humanizing it, right? And we're actually helping, a, we were supposed to have a, this client was supposed to be launching a brand new organization this week. Mm. And it's looking very, very different. Uh, and it slowed down, obviously, what they uh, were planning to do and what they can do. Their team is so excited and pumped. So we're going to harness that energy and we're going to, profile the team literally you are getting pictures in their kitchens and around you know wherever they are um reminding people that this is the team that's here to support you when we do have that big formal launch mm -hmm. and just like you we're you know we're, we're in this with you so again we're really humanizing it and putting we're taking this opportunity to do a little pro internal profiling rather than what we do this is who we are mm -hmm. and again i think that that's going to feed them to doug's point it's going to feed them well in the long term as they are out uh, looking to build new relationships. I'm seeing a lot of kind of people coming out from behind the brand, right? So before it was the brand that was forward facing and that's, that was really prominent and that did all the talking on behalf of the, of the organization, be it not for profit or, or whoever, right? Or, or large corporation. And now people are starting to step out from behind it and say, actually, you know, this is, this is how we're doing. This is how we're continuing to serve our market. This is, you know, even just our day to day. And I think you're right. I think that really kind of bringing that humanized um, approach uh, is, is just it's so needed right now, right? It's so needed. People need to, they're not connecting with the brand. They're connecting with the people behind the brand. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shane, do you have anything to add before we go on to the next? No, uh, I next agree kind of with uh, Kurt and Doug. Yeah, okay. Yeah down to authenticity and genuine. Yeah, awesome, awesome, great. So kind of the next um, area that we saw a lot of coming up from questions from folks is really looking at, um, you know, and Kurt, you kind of touched on this a little bit in terms of here you had a client that was about to like launch into the market, okay? And now here we are, current, current event. Um, what would be some way or how should, uh, you know, startups getting out into the market can connect with potential new clients or organizations, uh, you know, not-for-profit organizations that are still needing to connect with their, the, either the groups that they're serving or the groups that they are um, receiving support from, right? So a lot of not-for-profits and social enterprises are in that, that in-between mm -hmm. uh, stage. But if you're, a, if you're a startup and you're about to kind of go out, venture out into the market and, and like what, what does that look like now? Uh, I'll start if, if that's all right. I mean, we've got a cl another client whose business has literally been decimated. They offer a, a service that literally no one is using right now. And they had just hired a new sales team and they had ramped up their product development mm -hmm. and this hit and all of a sudden everything has gone away. Um, so they are, they're quite frankly worried. And what we're trying to do is channel that worry as best we can into getting ready for next steps because they don't know, back to my other, to one of my earlier comments, the uncertainty. Um, they just don't know when their space is going to open up again and when people are going to be ready to actually hear a message about buying. And I think mm -hmm. Shane, you mentioned that. We have to be honest with that. If people aren't ready for that message, then we, we just, we have to follow their lead. We have to follow the market's lead. We can test it every once in a while, I think, but we have to follow that lead. So right now they're using all their time and energies 
into building their internal systems. They're going to, you know, they're building out their CRM. They're building out some of their marketing. We're helping with some of their messaging and tools. They're getting ready for that launch. Um, I think it's risky to go out too soon, to be honest, for fear of, you know, the backlash that we're seeing from, you know, from the blue jeans, for example. So mm -hmm. that's not a very, that's not very tactical, but I think strategically, no, yeah. you have to follow your market's lead and going out too soon will be incredibly damaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So awesome. We have uh, one example from our client base, it, uh, again, just ready to launch. Um, and interestingly, among their products is an infection control management software mm -hmm. that, that, that helps uh, organizations like long-term care facilities measure hand washing protocols and, and that sort of thing. So. Um, it's a piece of what they do and their offering is significant beyond that very very sliver of market share because they're so brand new rather than try and sell it they gave it away so they yeah. took that component of their product the the infection control piece for long-term care and they basically just put it out there and, and as an offer through an engaging process to say if you wanted it's it's yours uh, and i think they had we haven't talked in about a week on it but they were at about a 50 percent uptake in a sampling of 100 organizations they were going out to it was kind of a why not so they're looking longer game to some extent in a couple of them they're already starting into conversations about the the fuller program that they could offer and of course at a fee and subscription and all the rest of it so a lot of it comes down to bringing value and, and worrying about the money later. And that's really easy to say. And, and I don't want to be disrespectful to people who are trying to figure out how to put food on the table because there are lots of folks in that position trying to go farther down the road and look at, at how this will sort of bring return on you. Um, another example from a client who does, um, she, she's an organizational team coach. So she really works with teams to kind of point them in the right direction and whatnot. So all that kind of fell by the wayside. Um, she was very w reluctant to just sort of do the LinkedIn blast and start start cold motoring through. Um, so she's doing very strategic, you know, can you introduce me to people type connections where she'll do something like this and it's the three of them are just having a conversation. It's It's an established client, someone she doesn't know, and herself. And again, it's very soft they're she, they're not even really talking about what she does mm -hmm. as much as how they're navigating to some of Kurt's earlier points around sort of the realities of dealing with team right now and and sharing experiences yeah. and she's seeing that as as setting up for an opportunity to circle back in a couple of months when hopefully we're all back to normal and uh and having a more marketing focused conversation mm -hmm. a couple of absolutely jane anything to add on that um, yeah, I, when I was working with the PR agency, I, I happened to have the opportunity to manage uh, some business crisis. And then I remember there's a saying uh, it's that sometimes you can control what happened to you, but you, you can certainly control what you do about it. Mm -hmm. So to Kurt and Doug's point, and, and based on what I hear from them, a lot of business, they were trying to promote themselves outwardly, and now they're trying to be doing some something more inwardly. And so I think um, this is the time that organizations or any unit can also in, uh, just initiate some conversation inside. Like, take some mm. time, reflect on, yeah. I'm sorry to say this, but reflect on the, the laws and then, try to learn and then try to put uh, make everyone on the same page and then to make change as soon as possible mm -hmm. and then again um, try to observe uh, any faint or strong signal that uh, shine in the future and then it, it, I, I would have to quote uh, like the New York governor Cuomo today it's like stone to stone across the morass you you, you yeah. we can do it step by step and then logically rationally but then we need to encourage ourselves we, we need to acknowledge the change and acknowledge the downfall and then we need to do something about it as quick as possible and then on top of everything we need to tr we, we need to try to manage 
and be on top of the situation. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, uh, a great deal of uncertainty still, but then I believe there's still certain amount of certainty that we can control and then we can manage. To Doc's client, they are trying to do something now to their own office instead of promoting themselves. And then I think there are certain, some still something that will benefit the business, but it's just uh, by another form and in a different way. Mm -hmm. So that whole idea of like seeding the future, right? That kind of came oh. up at the beginning when we were talking about it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, so I know, I know this question kind of particularly was, was pointed to, to startups, right? Launching. But I also think that, that, you know, if, if you are a not-for-profit and you are meeting to, to launch a new program because your organization is the, you know, the foundation of it in terms of revenue generating to support, um, you know, other initiatives that, that you're, that you do, um, you know, what would you like, how, how is it that folks are looking at making so many changes to the organization right now and supporting their, their house. Okay. They're in house, making sure everything's in line. Their, 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 their families are supported, that their staff are supported. And you have organizations that perhaps in the past have you know, been, uh, been philanthropic, right? They've supported other organizations. So what, what are we seeing now, or what can we, what can we point to, or what advice do we have for, you know, not-for-profits right now that are still needing that type of community support, right? Like how, how is it that these organizations are, and I don't know if we have an answer to that, but I think we really need just to recognize that that's, mm -hmm. that's something kind of as a go forward that we really need to be, um, to be mindful of. Um, I've sat on a number of, of, of you know, volunteered many, many, um, different organizations and sat on boards and, and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm thinking of them all right now. And, and what does that look like for them and the people whom they support, like, you know, the, the ripple effect that this has, you know? Yeah. Uh, may I just jump in for this question? Absolutely. Yeah, I know it's a loaded <laughs> question, but I just think it's so important that we recognize that it's mm -hmm. a whole, you know, um, I've always said not for profits also means not for loss. We need to treat it like a business, right? So there's a lot of talk right now that are going towards for profit organizations. But how are we how are we also looking at ways to support and market to and recognize the good work that's taking place, um, you know, community development work. So Shani, go ahead. Yeah, I think for a uh, nonprofit organization, particularly when I'm doing some volunteering job at the moment, so I'm being to a nonprofit organization uh, who's been suffering because everyone's staying home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, to the nonprofit organization, I would say sometimes the best offense is defense. Mm -hmm. This is the time we you can further down and to. Uh, run the relationship within the communication uh, within the community and then you're not doing it for any business um, mm -hmm. you're doing it for the sake of a healthier community mm -hmm. so for example some of the uh, volunteer gentlemen doing their they're active they are actively uh, running some online contest uh, for people to sign up and join and in, in to go out, uh, keeping social distancing and enjoy the nature. And then while they um, get breathing fresh air, but while they can still enjoy themselves. And then I see more nonprofit is being even more active mm -hmm. in initiating communication within their own community and in lifting people's spirits. Um, so uh, I, I would say that uh, doing what you're good at and then for the nonprofit it's definitely not a good time for you to go out asking for donations or sponsorship or partnership but then this is a time for you to truly run at the relationship within the community and to, to truly give out to the society and then just hold on I, I believe this is um, I believe the sun will shine mm. yeah mm. Well, and, and Kurt and I could probably take another couple of hours if we want, just ch yeah. chewing through this one, and it's complicated. And, and we see from the guest list, you know, there are certainly folks here who are in this exact situation. I 100% agree, Shaney. Do what you're doing so exceptionally well, and talk about it. Don't be afraid yeah. to share your yeah. story. And there's a little bit of that um, time stress as much as anything. I don't have time to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Find a way. And my other 
piece of advice would be go ask for help, not just yes. not money. I get that there's not a lot of that right now, but there's this whole group of businesses, of professionals who are hearing the same thing we're talking about. Lean into community, support, help, do what you can, but they don't necessarily know. And what are they saying? Volunteering, the number one reason why people volunteer is that they're asked to do so. So I would encourage a charity to a now <laughs> how many calls are we going to get tomorrow? <laughs> I would encourage a charity to just say we have this need and we're yep. stuck. I'm talking to a charity right now, and not this is not us, but where they, their uh, significant fundraising event is in a people event. It's a live people engaged, and they will not happen this year. It's kind of like the stampede getting canceled. It's that monumental to this organization, and. They, they were just so completely kind of frozen on how to approach this. And we, we started to just have a bit of a conversation about how do we digitize it? How do we sort of innovate and think differently about um, kind of what you're trying to do? How do we be even a bit silly and playful and whatnot? And, and, and we're getting there and it's taking some time. And I think partly they just, they weren't afraid to ask and say, hey, we have this need and maybe you can, you can help fill it. So that, that's the... It, there is no better time to just be kind of boldly going forward and saying, Hey guys, we, we need more than money. We need your talent and your, your, your hands and your opportunities too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Um, thank you. I know I realize this is like a, like a loaded question. We could have an entire session just geared yeah. in towards that, but I just, I really feel it's important to recognize that that like everybody is, is needing to, to lean into these different strategies to, to help communicate and, and um, you know, uh, strengthen their positioning within the market and who it is that they're, who it is that they're chatting with. So we've kind of gone through, we've talked a little bit about, you know, startups going into the market, you know, new programs being launched. Um, what about those organizations that are already established and, um, you know, they're in that more of that growth stage of, of their business. And, um, you know, now they're, now they're obviously like, like many, they're, they're being negatively affected by this, by this crisis. And so, you know, how do they address that? And then, and then maybe a sub question to this might be things like, okay, so they have their brand that's already established. How do they maintain it? Or how do they keep building it without investing too much money in it? Because that's something that is also a shortage right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, yeah, like what, what are, what would be some strategies that they should be looking at? The question we're encouraging clients to think about, and I've and I've stolen this line, so I'll, I'm happy to uh, probably declare that is: What are we going to bring to the new normal? What role are we going to play in that new normal? And I think that's a question that brands could be asking themselves right now as we start to think about. You know, this week we're starting to hear about you know things opening up again and what that looks like. So the timing's right for us again mm -hmm. internally. This is an internal conversation. We think about. What are we going to be bringing? What value are we going to be bringing to that new normal? And I think this is the time to do that. Um, and my hope, and forgive the soapbox, but let's make it a new normal. Uh, we can't go back to the old. It truly needs to be a new normal. And what role and what leadership can we play in that with our brand, whatever that is, if we're selling jeans, if we're, you know, coffee, keyboards, if we're not for profit, like what role do we want to play in there? I think to me, it starts as a leadership conversation. And back to where we started from a sense of authenticity as well. That's a really high level, but I think again, that's part back to the back to the why where mm -hmm. we started our, our time today. I think that is so important to be thinking about that. And then to Doug's point, uh, and Cheney's examples, you know, what can we creatively bring to that? But it, we need to be intentional around what we want to be doing in that new normal. And I, I think uh, that's not yet, but we mm -hmm. want to be ready for when that time comes. Mm -hmm. Doug, did you want to add to that? Sure. Well, it, we're having some interesting conversations about brand as well. And absolutely that organizations can't start dropping money on what you might call a soft expense right now. And of course, brand is not your logo and just your website look. Mm -hmm. um, it is your, your identity and your ethos. So one of the kind of the tools that we use that we've been passing around to clients is in this kind of setting it's great with your team is explore your identity and from the point of view of human human personality and to some of the earlier points that Shaney made on that it's we tend it brands tend to identify themselves a lot through um i guess less emotional context like 
um, you know, innovation and science and, um, you know, evidence-based and all those very real, very necessary tenets or aspects of a brand. This exercise is about finding the human personality traits. If you're, you're, you're brand with someone you want to hang out with, right. Um, you know, what would that look like? And it tends to start with a nice, healthy, long list. It's a great Zoom whiteboard exercise. The trick is in reaching consensus on the, on the three that really matter. Because it's easy for a brand to have 20 sort of personal attributes that make sense. I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. um, but if I have to hit the three that everyone agrees to, then we're starting to really boil it down to um, a human-related uh, identity and I think that's how you can start preparing for the new future as an organization is explore how your brand needs to just adjust or evolve uh, I don't think it's an evolution but certainly there's a tweak that can go toward where people are going to need you to be keeping them safe keeping them comfortable um, austerity is not a, we're going to be in an austere time and it's not not a time to be um, for it's big and boastful, we have to be real. So brands can be doing that right now and explore mm -hmm. as a group. Mm -hmm. Shane, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, may I just share a picture that I really love and I yeah. came across online uh, the other day. <laughs> yeah, this is this is it. Uh, mm. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I, I think this is the future for us. It's mm. uh, we need this pair of glasses to see through and to cut through and then to mm. uh, and then to everyone's one million dollar question. What is the new normal? Everyone's asking. Everyone's saying that adapt, acknowledge, transform, go do something to the new normal. But then the truth is our future is still as vague as this picture mm. in the background. And then how can we own this pair of glasses to like Doc's curse point? I think we'll, like, yes, we can go on, on to a lot of changes that we will face in our lives. Um, for example, the technology will just booming now and everyone will just be more deeply engaged with technology and then across all ages. I'm surprised to see my grandma trying to Zoom with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like once in my life, I have to say amen to that. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. And then and then the way we engage. Yeah. Like nowadays I see young people they playing games and they try and then trying to make social contact on the gaming world. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how we now care about health and, and, and then food safety. And then I, I see some articles saying about how full industry are going to fall on with the blockchain technology and then how they can facilitate this from farm to table idea. Mm -hmm. And then what's the impact it will make to our retail? Mm -hmm. will, will, will we have a future that one day we just click on our mobile and then we 30 minutes later, we ha will have a farmer deliver the food mm -hmm. to our home steps and then we will feel more safe with safer with our food this mm -hmm. is all kinds of possibility we're looking at but then I, I, I will have to go back to Doc's point at the end of the day we are the only thing that's on change is that we're still human beings mm -hmm. yeah we have exactly. basic needs we have we want to connect we want to social we we want to eat we want to survive and then and then that will gradually become more and more important. Our basic need, this pandemic, throw us back to our original uh, desire and then make us pay more attention to this basic mental and, and, and physical needs. And then I think that's something people really can look into and then mm -hmm. and explore more about. So leave your picture up here. I just wanna, I wanna kind of just touch on things for, for just a second. And you also were, were mentioning about this whole like, you know, we were like everybody at the end they were all human we're all kind of craving the same thing right now and so the other thing about human behavior is that when we stretch and grow when we're asked to change and do something that we're not familiar with or you know that is really uncomfortable for a lot of people and and sometimes there's hesitancy I shouldn't say sometimes most often there's hesitancy that comes with that right people dig their heels in and now more than ever we there's no time for that 
people need to be really uh, quickly responding to the needs of their market, to the needs of their people. And, you know, um, Kurt, you touched on this when we were chatting another time in and around the servant leadership. And I just, I love that. And I've actually uh, used that, cert that saying and credited you to it around, you know, now more than ever, we need to get people to whether it's put the glasses on, come out from behind the brand and show the human side of, of this and, um, you know, and what's needed, what's required in order to really, you know, it's not a matter of whether businesses will pivot, it's how will they pivot, how, it's right. when will they pivot, yeah. right? Like it's, it's, it's the change right now, it's in front of us. Some, some have already uh, gone through that that bit of a shift. You know, you were giving some really great examples earlier of some you know larger corporations that are doing that, and Doug yourself as well. And I just think you know, um, you know, now more than ever, we really need to to highlight um, you know the the role that we as people have in um, you know the power that these brands have because they're driven by people, they're led by people. So that really needs to be something that we can that we can connect with and. And I think it kind of, you know, ties in a little bit with, with what we we're going to be talking about next in terms of like AC after COVID, you know, what? Sorry, Melanie, just before, could I just jump in really quickly? Absolutely. Yes, sorry, sorry about that, Kurt. No, 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 no. And I just really some a real, pr two things. I've seen the future and it is servant leadership. Yeah. Um, there's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, and there. honestly, I just. That is how we are going to get ourselves out of this and build better, stronger organizations. We, we'll circle back to that. Back to the glasses imagery, a really practical tool for us to be helping focus is this idea of engagement. If marketing is a two-way conversation, engagement is where, I think Shani said it, we're shutting up and we're listening, right? Mm -hmm. Let's engage our customers. There was a, back to the question of what, are, what can we be doing right now? Good engagement would be reaching out to those clients or customers that are close, right? Like they are tight, we know them well, they know us, we've seen their dirty laundry and, and probably vice versa. We can have, though, so I'm not talking about a survey to hundreds of people. I'm talking about five or six phone calls to key clients or partners and say, we're thinking about this. Yeah. Think. And we're being incredibly vulnerable here. Again, these are a very select group of organizations mm -hmm. or, or companies that we're reaching out to. But let's just say, or let's reach out to them and say, you know, we're trying to figure out what next steps look like. What are we going to bring to this new normal? How do we support clients like yourself? Could I have 15 minutes to ask you a few questions? Mm -hmm. Two things are going to happen there. You're going to build that relationship even tighter because they're going to be honored that you've come to them and you're going to be acknowledging the tight relationship you have. Secondly, you're going to get gold. You're going to get client-based language mm -hmm. and open, honest feedback on, no, don't do this, but you know what? We do need this. And if you've got those A-listers that are super close and super tight, take advantage of that engage which is asking and then shutting up and then that you know that along with that great exercise that doug had and some of the insights that shane is showing us then you can start to think about your next steps mm -hmm. but going out without that level of intimate knowledge i think well <laughs> let, me, let me i'll rephrase that that level <laughs> of intimate knowledge from your client base will take a good idea and make it great it's almost informed consent right because we need to give ourselves yeah. permission to make this Great. necessary changes and when we reach out to those people whose opinions we value yep. and that mm -hmm. almost gives us that permission to take that that leap of Good. faith right we know it's Good. the right thing to do but ugh. so yeah. that in, yeah i love that well and if i just one last thing on this i love that kurt as well and and um, what i've been finding the one plus of this tool right here um, for all the challenges is that we see people square in the face when we're talking to them mm -hmm. and you there's not as far to hide I've, it's been interesting i've been processing that in in one-on-one -on -one or in in sort of real group settings how infrequently we look at each other square on in the face we're checking mm -hmm. other things and we're you know sourcing the room and whatever this is pretty unfiltered and when those relationships are that trusted and that intimate then I can look at Kurt and say, I can tell by the look in your face, you're not quite there. So let's keep going and totally. kind of pull that thread, right? Brilliant. So it's actually a really effective tool right now to connect with someone in an interesting, uh, very real way. Yeah, mm. good. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. So any, you know, I'm just mindful of the time and I, I wanna make sure that, you know, we kind of go, I wanna go to the chat box and make sure that if there's anything that I haven't touched on that we have a chance to address, but. 
Is there anything that I haven't, um, you know, that we haven't talked about yet that you just feel is really important to share with our audience here tonight? Well, I'll, I'll circle back to my three points. I think the acknowledgement, yeah, I think the acknowledgement both to our teams and to our customers is mission critical and to our teams, right? And depending, no, actually no matter the, where, no matter the size of your organization, that acknowledgement around whatever they're going through, those challenges, I just think it's really important. And as leaders, as good marketers, we need to be understanding the, the context of, of whoever it is that we're, we're speaking with. And of course, it's not about us, right? It's always about our audience. Yeah. So uh, for me, that, that hit home today with something that we did uh, last week. We did some acknowledgement. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't think much of it. And it circled back this week uh, well, on behalf of a client. And it was just a great reminder that, oh, yeah, we took the time to check in. And that was, uh, to Doug's point, it was, it's a long tail. And it's going to have huge benefit, um, both from a reputational and a sales value. So for me, that acknowledgement piece is mission critical, as is the, this idea of how am I adding value into the world right now? Mm -hmm. And how am I really having to take an honest, hard look? And again, it's hard not to. We want to keep people employed and top line. But how yeah. can we be doing? How can we be engaging and listening without having uh, blue jeans right in front of our face? For mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th I had one something that I feel like getting a T-shirt and made right about now is this sort of the the, the theme of having permission to pause. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're not always done. I'm doing that a lot with my team, and we do this every morning, and it's been amazing. And to Kurt's point, it's about 20 minutes of what'd you make for dinner and how are the kids? And it's about four minutes of, you know, strategy and client, which is exactly the right proportion. But we're having to remind each other that you don't have to be pedal down all the time, fixing this, figuring it out, doing everything we're talking about here. Take permission to pause because that's going to keep you feeling a little bit more energized to, to sort of dive back into it. Um, my amazing wife has been here with me all the time now and watching me work. So we're learning lots about each other. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Isn't that just yeah, interesting I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whole new level. <laughs> but if she's the one helping me, it is okay. Take permission to pause and you'll mm -hmm. get to a lot more uh, confidence and, and sureness. So that's, that's my last piece of advice to anybody. Awesome. Shane, I'd love to hear from you from your experience. Uh, okay, I, I would just sum up with five points. Uh, first of all, for those who is still stubborn and not willing to go digital, go digital. <laughs> <laughs> the most important Do thing it. is to yep. learn <laughs> from this COVID pandemic. And then second of all, uh, practice what you preach. Just follow your brand's identity and then build your brand according to its value. Try not to stretch too much that make people feel you're doing something funny uh, and third engage your community with all sorts of uh the tour you have uh through social media through email through phone calls any ways to keep you connected and to keep others connected and then and then and then the fourth to doc's point i love it so much show your vulnerability and then to reach out when you need help this is the time when we stick together and when we stand together, it's not just a saying. We see a lot of uh, companies, they break their boundary like Google and um, Apple working together to combat this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe in the future, we will have some positive change in, in terms of how the boundary has been broken because, um, because of this, I would say the civil lining of this is the boundary will be broken and we yeah. will embrace a new way of forming business model and business partnership. And then last but not the least, um, we need to acquire that pair of glasses for the business owner and then everyone who's serving a client or even though you're not a business owner, but then you as an individual, you're, you're trying to survive form a vision for yourself. Think about what you will be in three years, in five years, what the business you like it to be in three years, five years, and reflect on it and to plan it, to act on it. Don't let yourself stop. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, to Doc's point, allow yourself to have the luxury to pause because mm -hmm. I, I believe Doc has been very busy for, for a while 
in, in the past years for his business. But then for those who feel different, you have a way to keep yourself going. Yeah. So that, that would be my five advice. Yeah. That's awesome. So just, um, just kind of, I, I do have a couple of points I want to make, but while I'm doing that, I wanted to just kind of flip over to the chat and just give folks a chance if they feel like they have a question that hasn't been touched on tonight. If you want it just to drop it in, in, the, in the box, I've had some of my team that have kind of been going through and flagging some things that, that I've been trying to kind of thread into our conversation tonight. But if there's something that you really want us to touch on, I would encourage you to do that now uh, that we can take a peek at it. Um, but, uh, and then while you're typing, I just want to kind of give a couple of, of other kind of comments here. And I was thinking about this earlier, but Cheney, you reminded me this, the importance of connections collaborations, partnerships, like I, I really, I agree, we're going to see a whole lot of new interesting relationships coming out of this, right? We we're going to see some, and at first I imagine some of them are, we're going to go, huh, and then it's going to go, that totally makes sense. Why didn't I see that before, right? Like I really do think that the outcome of this is going to open up so many new opportunities for us to to really lean into our, our values, our environment, um, you know, while we're pausing, Doug, taking that time to think creatively about where, you know, if, you know, if, if we had ultimate control, where would we like to see our business go right now? Not just in terms of growth targets, but really being, um, thinking strategically about where do we want to plant our feet? Right. And so I think now really is a time for us to be using a lot of what we've talked about here tonight in terms of strategies and tools and and, you know, like Kurt asking yourselves, what kind of a leader do we want to be? And, and I hope everyone says, you know, servant leader, that's really what I want to be. And then therefore, what changes do I need to make in order to make that happen? And um, so if I if I were to say to you, um, I'm going off script careful here. So if I were to say to you, what would be, what would be a, a thought that you have about, you know, whether it's a word or a feeling or whatever that you could share about, um, about the future? Um, you know, what would that be? What would that be? I think you hit on it already. And that to me, it is around uh, a much richer collaboration. So an environment where we're, we're more comfortable asking for help, we're more comfortable reaching out. And I love your point that you kind of, you reach this moment from, it's like, I don't know why, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's really a great relationship I just built. I believe so much of what we talked about is going to be accelerated back to normal by coming together and, 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 and as businesses. Um, and, you know, Kurt's a good friend of mine and a competitor, and we have no problem with both. We will tag team on projects. We love working together and we love crossing paths between the pitches. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And you can have that environment in your business climate and make it work really, really well and, and, and do good together mm -hmm. uh, as well as on your own. So just, just to echo what you said really is, is for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Kurt, I know you probably have something you want to share in this, but what I, I recognize that I threw out a term of yours and I didn't provide context. So do you want to just take a minute and share a little bit about what you mean when you say servant leadership, just so that everybody, all the folks on the line here understand what it is when I'm like praising it, what right, exactly well, it is I'm talking about? I appreciate that. And the concept is that as a leader, um, my job is to empower my team and help their success. This is when, as leading, I'm not leading for me. I'm leading, for, I'm leading to serve my team or my organization or my organization. So I'm taking myself and my id out of my leadership and then putting my focus back on how do I serve my team? So very, very quickly, two parts to servant leadership. The leadership is with my team. I'm saying, here's what we're doing. Here's where we're going. Here's the direction. Once that's done, I'm then, I get out of the way and I look at my team and say, how do I help you get there? And so it's no longer about me, me, me being me looking good. I do, I do that well enough on my own. Uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm glad someone laughed. I, that, was, that could have been very awkward for a second there. My job is to empower my team to help them get there. And so how do I serve them? Because in serving them, I'm serving the ultimate goal of the organization, in this case, my company or, or, um, uh, or the, our community, whatever it is. 
building on that really quickly, my one word is equity. Mm. Equity is no longer a nice to have, oh, you, you know, good little community people. Equity is mission critical to having a successful economy. And we are seeing discrepancies now, sorry, that COVID is putting a light on things that is costing us money. So forget the nice to do. This is costing us ridiculous money because we do not have an equitable society. And businesses cannot thrive, the majority of businesses, to be clear, cannot thrive unless we have an equitable and fair economy. And I'm all about the economy here. This is not about my bleeding heart. Uh, yeah. This is about creating environments where all businesses can, can su succeed. If we do not pay people a living wage, they can buy stuff. People, they're, they're, we're just gonna, those gaps are gonna continue to grow and grow. Mm -hmm. So the one word that I'm hoping to embed into, you know, what is Pearl Street bringing into the new normal is how are we making the business case for equity? And I believe mm -hmm. it is mission critical to the economic, social, and environmental future. So there's, uh, there's my soapbox. Thanks for the No, <laughs> that's no, good. Chance. Janie. Uh, oh, oh, I love Kurt's um, leading by serving. Oh my God, that's mind blowing. Really love it. And uh, if I also can give one word, it's yeah. transparency. Mm. I think the future will look very much different because we will have different ways of communicate. We will have different ways of engage. And then it's because of digitalization. And once we put it out there to mm. Doc's words the other day, trust will be the new currency. Mm -hmm. You need to right. build trust through your transparency. And right. then if everything's online, people can check their price within five seconds. People yeah. can get all the information within three seconds, as long as, you, you know, it's just a tap away. Yeah. So how can um, business keep this transparency while winning the consumer's heart and fulfill their need? Mm -hmm. I think that will be interesting to look at the future. And I also think that applies, it applies quite a bit also too when we, we are talking about our not-for-profit sector because people now are going to be very, um, you know, perhaps because now they're limited a little bit more in their capacity to give. And so that notion of transparency and trust and honesty now more than ever, we need to be establishing relationships with our um, our, you know, if organizations have that philanthropic arm of the organization still after this, you know, because they may now be reevaluating how like their share of wallet, right? And so right. having that relationship with within the giving community, I think is is uh, really important as well. It's something that we need to be mindful of. So I haven't seen anything, um, you know, oh, no new questions that have popped up. So what I'd love to do right now is just really quickly summarize some of my takeaways from tonight. And I, I really enjoyed our conversation and, and um, you know, just hearing from the different perspectives. But I think underlining, we really all have similar, uh, you know, a lens and approach. And that really is that notion of, of that human humanizing our efforts right now humanizing our brands and connecting ever so, um, you know, um, authentically with our audiences. That, that really, regardless of your sector or the size of your business, um, that is so important right now. And, you know, using this time that, uh, that we have to seed the future, Doug, I heard you say that. Um, the other thing I thought was really interesting is, the, is affirming also too, is the use of email marketing as a tool. So, you know, recognizing it for what it is, it is really a way to provide information, send information outward, but now more than ever, we need to be mindful about what that information is and what is it that people need to hear from us? Cause it isn't about like, look at all the glorious things that I have for you. It's about here I am for you. Here's what our team are doing. And, and you know, when you're ready, we're gonna be here for you as well, right? So just reinforcing that connection that people have. Um, uh, I really like to reminding us about, you know, connecting with our community, whether it's time, talent, or treasure. There's so many uh, really great ways in which that we can stay connected as people. Seems to be, you know, that seems to be the theme right now. It's, it's not just convening conversations, it's also building community. And our communities look very different now than they did before. And we're, we're looking for ways to purposely create community, right? Because we're feeling at, we're feeling a little bit at a loss um, around that. And also too, um, 
what are um, some of the things that I heard tonight too is looking at those human traits of our brand. So coming out from behind the brand, what are the values that our brands stand for? How can we humanize that? Um, because that's really our legacy. That's what's going to propel us forward and allow us to remain um, present within the market, but then also in the minds of our customers. And so we need that ever more now is, is to really have that, that, uh, that connection, um, that connection that we have. Um, and I loved hearing from you too, in terms of what we need in terms of our words, whether it's, you know, equity, transparency, trust, that, that new currency, um, and partnerships and collaborations, you know, this is, this is not new, this is not novel, but now more than ever, we really do need to lean into these concepts to ensure that, um, you know, first and foremost, that we're putting our people first and the rest will all fall into play. So thank you so much for your time uh, and joining myself. And I know there are others on the line that we can't see, but I was, I was loving the conversation along the side. Um, I appreciate everybody's uh, coming together this evening. Uh, you know, this looks very different than how we're used to getting together, yeah. but I appreciate you all joining us nonetheless. And, and um, you know, uh, hopefully we'll have another time to connect as well. So thank you again to our, our guests here tonight. And, thank you. Um, you know, you, you all have such interesting, varied, meaningful experiences that I, I really appreciate that you were able to bring that forward tonight and, and really, you know, just, just showcase for us all why I asked you to be here tonight, okay? So this is just lovely, and I thank you again ever so much. Thank you for It was time. fun. Thanks for asking. Thanks for, thanks for no problem. Awesome. Awesome. Good awesome. Everybody. All right. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Keep washing Bye -bye. your hands. Stay Thank safe you. and stay home. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye. Bye.